Hi, this is Frank Carmody. <clears throat> we're going to go ahead and explore um, more constraining today. Uh, so we're going to create an assembly file and then look at the tangential constraints. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and create an assembly. We're not going to create the component part files today. Um, those should be easy to create at this point, so we're just going to use a couple of example part files. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and put place component place component. I'm going to choose my example rectangular solid. Click open. This is a um, 1 by 4 by 2 rectangular solid, so I click what places one automatically. Click again to place again. <clears throat> to place a second one. Click place again. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, open up an example cylinder. Okay, right click and done the cylinder. And now we're going to constrain um, the the blocks so that they're going to be we can have kind of an angle between the two blocks, uh, and then we can the, the cylinder then in that angle. So we're going to go ahead and flush up the side. So I click Mate and flush. Click two sides flush. Okay. And we're going to take our cube, kind of spin it back around, and now you're going to see that. Um, I can only open and close this block or the set of blocks uh, like so. So they're all set to create our angle between. Now it's an interesting trick with Inventor. Let's take the order that I click on the constraints matters. So let's take our degree. If I click the bottom surface first, there's, I'm going to do the two top face or the two top facing surfaces of my rectangular size. So I'm going to click the bottom one first and then the second. And then I'm going to set it to a 45 degree angle. And you'll see what happens in the example. If you can't see, let me go ahead and zoom in on that. You see what happens here. Now, obviously that isn't what I wanted to happen, so I'm going to click Cancel. Now let's take the same constraint, but I'm going to apply it in the opposite order. So we're going to do a degree. So I'm going to click on the top of the top facing second one, the very top surface. Then I'm going to click on the bottom, top the top face of the surface of the bottom rectangle. <clears throat> and then I'm going to change that to 45 degrees. And this gives us our desired result. So you can see that in Inventor, sometimes it's not intuitive as to what will happen. And you know, it's a good idea if something doesn't go right, that doesn't seem right to you, just assume that it's not a, um, it just, Inventor isn't always intuitive. So go ahead and experiment a little bit with that. Um, okay, so now we're going to do the tangent constraints. So let's say that I want to fit this cylinder right in between these two blocks. So we're going to go ahead and select tangent. Uh, the outside tangent is already selected. So I'm going to go ahead and select my cylinder and the face of my block. Okay, now notice it goes into the block itself. So if I were to cancel out and drag this around a little bit, notice I can drag it. Now it's very hard to see. It looks like the block is moving up and down, but in fact it's moving very far out in distance. So if I move this over here, or move uh, move the block just up, watch where that act block actually went. If I go to zoom all. Okay, so this is actually way out in space here. Oops, not that far out in space. <laughs> um, if you go to the wrong view, you can't really tell that it's tangent, but if you then roll the cube around, you can see that it actually stays tangent to the block. Notice I'm trying to move this up and down. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is apply the next tangent constraint. So we're going to go to constraint. Um, the trick I was trying to show you there is if, if it looks, if all of a sudden you can't find a part, just click zoom on. It's probably that you've moved it and didn't realize you were moving it way out into three dimensional space. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and make another tangent constraint, clicking the cylinder first and then the bottom face of the top block. And we'll click apply. Okay, so there we have, uh, um, there we have the two tangential constraints. And basically what's happened is the, the, um, the cylinder is now constrained here between the two blocks. The last thing that we want to do to fully constrain that constrain that cylinder is to add one final constraint. It's a mate flush, and that's going to put the cylinder right up against the back of the block. And I go ahead and click Apply. Okay, so there we have it. Uh, good luck. Your assignment is to create
a con tangential constraint just as I have here. Thank you very much.